Hi everyone, this week we're going to be taking a look at a MacBook Pro that I picked up at Vintage Computer Festival East. Uh, this is me at the hotel room being completely impatient trying to see if it turns on. Luckily they had a charger on a shelf nearby while I was waiting to check out. I noticed it was there, it was $5, so why not pick up a charger while you're there. Um, it says it needs a hard drive. Figured it might have been bad, but we'll go ahead and unscrew it here and find out that it has no hard drive. course I had to wait for it to get home so I could get a solid state drive ordered. Um, I actually ended up having a used one on hand just a cheap 128 gigabyte slapped it in there and then we'll just give it a little wipe down inside. It wasn't too dirty but while I'm in here I'll just wipe down the inside of the case get it put back together and we'll go ahead and get Mac OS installed. I had read online that Windows 10 was supposed to work with this. It did technically work, but certain things didn't, like the any of the shortcut keys didn't work, the backlight on the keyboard didn't work, so rather than trying to track down drivers, I just went with the regular Mac OS um, just for ease of use and for the end user. This isn't something I'm going to be keeping, I just wanted to not see it go in the trash basically. So we'll go ahead and get Mac OS installed, get it updated, and run some tests on this computer. You can see this has the 2.4 gigahertz i7 and 8 gigs of RAM, so it's at least still usable today. Um, at least, you know, we're not working with an old Core 2 Duo, which you can get by, but this will be at least usable for, you know, internet browsing, basic tasks like word editing. Um, so it'll actually be of use to someone today rather than just a nostalgic piece. So after playing around on the computer for a while, I decided to download MaxFan just so I could see how the temperatures were on it and be able to control the fan speeds. Um, Mac does try to keep it quiet, so the fan speeds are typically very low set from the factory. I wanted to raise the fan speed, but unfortunately the temperatures were still fairly high only watching YouTube. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and tear it down and do what I pretty much do with every electronic I get and replace the thermal paste and make sure there's no dust clogging up the fans or vents or anything. Just to prolong the life of this, I don't really expect any performance gains. This isn't um, really a performance laptop anyways. It's more of just a productivity unit. So this is basically just maintenance to prolong the life of it and hope to get the temperatures just a little bit lower. So we'll go ahead and start by removing any connectors off of the motherboard. We need to disconnect the battery before we do this. Um, and then we'll just go through step by step. I'm just following an iFixit guide for a close unit. I don't think I found this exact model, but it's close enough that you can at least follow the guide. Get any connectors removed, remove the fans, and then the motherboard will need to come out, unfortunately, to replace the thermal paste. Some have a heat sink mounted on top, so you can just unscrew that. Unfortunately, this is mounted below, so it requires quite a bit of disassembly.
now that we have the motherboard out, we can go ahead and remove the heat sink to get a look at that thermal paste, see just how dry and crusty it is. You can see there's not really great coverage anyways, just because it's been dry for so long, it's basically flaking off. So we'll just clean that off of the processor and the GPU, both integrated, so neither can be upgraded. So we'll just clean off that old thermal paste, get everything nice and shiny, and apply some new paste. This is also a good opportunity if there is any dust in the heat sinks, you can blow those out. These really weren't too bad, but any small particles, might as well blow them out while we're in here. Um, some weird camera glitch there where you can't see the wrong amount of thermal paste that I put on. And then we'll go ahead and tighten down the screws in a diagonal pattern. Don't just go ahead and tighten one down, because then it won't seat evenly. Once you have those all snug down, we can go back to the reinstall process reverse the steps and get the motherboard reinstalled and hope these temperatures are lower.
the case did have a slight bend in it which was causing the bottom panel to not sit properly so what I did is take a microfiber cloth so that I wouldn't scratch it and then just pinch with pliers and try to bend it back to shape. It's never going to be perfect but at least now we can get the bottom panel to sit flush once the screws are put in so it won't be any extra stress causing the standoffs to break off or the bottom panel to come loose. Once we get this buttoned up we'll get the computer turned back on, check it out and see how it's running. And here's that dreaded moment where it won't load the OS and you think, what did I do? Did I break it? Now the solid state drive just wasn't clicked in all the way. Simple mistake, so we'll pop that back in, get it screwed down properly, and the computer loads up. Uh, I tried watching YouTube and playing a little bit of Multicraft, which is just kind of a weird little Minecraft knockoff, but the temperatures unfortunately were the same. So yeah, big waste of time, but I feel better because I got to replace thermal paste on yet another thing. Thanks for watching.